Good morning. Uh, my name is Elias Bakhtiari, um, and I'm presenting some, some work I've been doing uh, in collaboration with Professor Sigrun Olofsdottir. And uh, I realized I forgot to put our institutional information on my, my title slide here, so I should say that uh, we're both from Boston University, and uh, please don't hold that against me if you're a hockey fan. <laughs> Um, so what I'm talking about today is uh, looking at the role of the, the welfare state. Um, so first thinking a little theoretically about um, why it's important to consider um, when looking at health and health inequalities. Um, and then getting into some, some pre preliminary results and some directions for future research. And we, we see this um, as adding to the sort of large body of research that, that looks at the relationship between social position and health. Um, this is something that's not only been sort of verified and studied empirically, but um, also theoretically, uh, low social standing or social position um, has been conceptualized as a fundamental cause of, of health and illness that's capable of, of reproducing health inequalities, even as more immediate mechanisms for, for illness change across time and place. Um, you know, although the predominant focus in this research has been on the, the inverse association between socioeconomic status and health, um, it's also included um, research on various types of social inequality related to gender, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and migration status. Um, and, and so this is, this is the type of research that, um, you know, many of us are familiar with and we've heard a lot about in the last week. Um, and Sort of, we see a couple of ways that the, the growing uh, prevalence of, of, of cross-national comparable data um, allows researchers to, to add to this body of research, um, both theoretically and empirically. Um, so first, it's, it allows researchers to, to verify uh, the link between social position and health um, across a range of contexts. Um, this has been very important in, in sort of uh, replicating the association between socioeconomic status and health. Um, there, there's been research across a, a range of diverse contexts with diverse health systems and, and, and a range of, of broader social contexts. Um, but in addition to looking, uh, asking questions of, of similarity, we can also ask questions of difference. Um, in other words, we can look at how uh, even the most consistent link between um, social position and health, uh, looking at the, the socioeconomic status gradient, um, can differ in magnitude across context. And, and this is something that uh, the previous uh, presentation touched on. So I, it, one of the remaining challenges, though, is explaining this variation. Um, and it, theoretically, it, it directs our attention to uh, broader questions about how institutions are capable of shaping the, the social conditions that influence health and illness, um, particularly institutions at a country level. Uh, so our, our research in particular is interested at, in how the welfare state as a, an institutional intervention in society that, that can shape social and market forces um, influence, influences patterns of health and health inequality. Um, so our, our immediate goals, uh, we sort of have four for this presentation and, and some more longer term goals that I'll talk about at the end. Um, so first, we're interested in, in our sort of first step is to operationalize health inequalities or health gradients along several dimensions um, as, as sort of comparable variables across contexts. Um, second, once we um, sort of develop, develop these gradients, we uh, map the variation across contexts. Um, and here uh, we look at um, gradients in terms of education, income, gender, and minority status. Um, after demonstrating cross-national variability of the health gradients, we then begin to explore the possible determinants. Um, uh, first, we consider the, the general role of the welfare state as a possible force for uh, alleviating or shaping um, broader levels of inequality, and then we look more specifically at the welfare state's role in, in targeting health, uh, um, health disparities. So, uh, so why is, is the welfare state uh, relevant uh, when talking about health and health inequalities? Um, so I'll start with, with the kind of a de basic definition of the welfare state as an, an intervention by the state and civil society to, to alter social and market forces. Many are probably familiar with uh, Esping, Esping Anderson's classification of welfare regimes in Europe, um, sort of contrasting social democratic regimes e exemplified by the Scandinavian countries with uh, liberal and conservative corporatist orientations uh, toward the, the market and redistribution. Um, but uh, in a sense, all states are welfare states and the, the you know, exist outside of this, the initial typology. And, and scholars have increasingly sought to sort of expand the, the study of, 
uh, influence of the welfare state to a, a wider range of situations and countries. So thinking about the, the possible mechanisms or possible ways that the welfare state might be um, important, um, first is sort of the, the question of citizenship. Um, the welfare state plays a role in creating and reinforcing boundaries of inclusion and ex exclusion um, in its coverage policy decisions. Uh, this is particularly relevant for you know, growing populations of, of migrants in many um, industri advanced industrial nations. Um, but it's also applied to other groups, especially historically. Um, and so in that sense, the, the welfare state can play a role in sort of solidifying definitions of in-groups and out-groups. Uh, there's also a, a cultural dimension. Um, the social organization of the welfare state in, in ways uh, shapes and reflects the overarching uh, national culture regarding attitudes towards social inequality, resource redistribution, um, and even matters of stigma and medicalization um, as it applies to health. Uh, there's also the issue, issue of redistribution, which is it would, um, arguably seen the most attention in, in studies of welfare states. Um, often the stated goal of uh, uh, sort of more involved welfare states is to reduce levels of inequality or provide a safety net for disadvantaged members of society. Uh, so in that sense, it has a large impact on the broader uh, context of, of health inequality. And then finally, we could look more at, at targeted interventions. Um, the welfare state is an important and very large provider of health services in, in most countries um, and shapes uh, uh, sort of the um, delivery. Um, but there are also other uh, sort of targeted interventions that we could think of as being related to, to specific health inequalities. Um, such as uh, unemployment insurance or uh, family support um, and support for uh, disability. And there has been uh, some research sort of asking this question of how the welfare state influences um, health. Um, the, I, I would say for the most part it's, it's been mixed. Uh, there's been more uh, sort of more research on the, the question of how the welfare state uh, impacts patterns of overall health, um, with some evidence suggesting that uh, there, there is better overall health in, in more generous welfare states, particularly the uh, social democratic countries of, of Scandinavia. The question of um, health inequalities is a little bit less conclusive. Um, the studies have noted variation, but there hasn't uh, been sort of the expected pattern of, of lower inequalities or lower gradients in, in, in sort of higher spending countries. Um, so there's been sort of a sense of variation without clear explanation. And I, I, there are two characteristics of a, a lot of the previous research that um, I, I should note and that we sort of try to build on or, or, or sort of differentiate ourselves from. Um, the first is, is a lot of the research has relied on, on sort of the categorical typology of, of the welfare state, uh, building on, on the early work, the sort of Esping Anderson work on um, the sort of types of, of welfare states. Um, and sort of because that uh, work started in, in, in Europe, and particularly Western Europe, much of the, the research is focused on countries of Europe um, and Western Europe. So two ways we, we hope to advance the research is, is first by um, expanding our analysis to a, a slightly uh, more diverse range of countries, and second, using a, a slightly different um, sort of operationalization of what we mean when we're talking about welfare state intervention. So the way we do that is we uh, use the um, data from the 2011 International Social Survey Program. Um, this is a, an annual cross-national uh, survey with uh, rotating modules uh, based on, on different topics, and the 2011 module looked specifically at health and attitudes toward health. And so the advantage is it not only includes many countries um, that have been looked at previously in Western Europe, but also has representatives from across the globe, including you know, Japan, Turkey, uh, South Korea, Australia, the US, just to name a few. Um, in addition, we, uh, we look at, you know, because some of these countries haven't uh, been studied within the um, sort of typology welfare state framework, um, we use um, social expenditures uh, provided by the OECD as kind of a proxy for total sort of, uh, state involvement in, in um, social transfers and, and social um, social expenditures. Uh, so we look at both per capita and per GDP, and then from the World Health Organization, we get some specific data related to health and sort of use that as, as an indicator of a specific targeted uh, welfare state involvement in health and healthcare. So briefly to, to talk about our methods, we kind of proceed in a couple stages. Um, we start um, 
by estimating health gradients uh, based on education, income, gender, and my minority status um, within each country. And so we do this by um, performing a, a binary logistic regression on the, the probability of poor self-rated health. Um, so that's our, our dependent variable um, is self-assessment of health. And then for each variable of interest, we calculate the difference in predicted probability between um, the different social positions. So, for example, for education and income, we divide the country distribution into quartiles, uh, with the bottom representing low education of income, the top quartile representing relatively high levels. And all of this loses some precision and allows us to compare rel relative position um, and avoiding some of the issues with different classifications across such a uh, large range of countries. For minorities, uh, sorry, for, for gender, we do a similar comparison where we compare the difference in predicted probability between um, men and women. Uh, for our, our ethnic minority variables, it's, um, it's a little bit messy. Um, the ISSP provides country-specific um, variables for um, ethnicity categories, uh, but I should say that the level of detail and classification varies a lot across um, each country. Um, so for each, we kind of went through and tried to gauge the general dividing line between the, the majority population and what might be considered um, an ethnic minority, um, sort of lumped together as one minority group. So it's, it's not the best variable. And you know, to give an example, in, you know, in a lot of European countries, the, the dividing line is, is um, sort of uh, native versus uh, foreign-born minority. Um, in, in some countries, there, there's more or less detail pr pr provided about um, the makeup of that more minority population. So it's, it's, it's kind of a rough variable. Uh, but it's something we wanted to at least consider um, as, we, as we did these comparisons. So just to quickly summarize um, the, the, the first step of looking at, at variation. Um, with uh, in, income and education, we, we saw sort of as expected consistent um, direction of these, these health gradients, but a lot of variation in the magnitude. Um, the, uh, for the gender and minority variables, however, there is, there's difference both in the, the direction and magnitude, and I'll, I'll show graphically what I'm talking about. So this is, this is the um, sort of the graph of the health gradient by country. Um, and so what we see here is the difference in probability of poor health between low and high education levels with larger numbers reflecting a larger health gradient. Um, so as you can see, there's a pretty uh, wide range from essentially non-significant in uh, Japan and Denmark to uh, a more than 40% difference between low and high um, education levels in Chile. Similarly, for, for income, we see a, a consistent direction where the uh, 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 SES gradient um, or health gradient uh, is, um, seems to be present in most countries, but a, a large range in, in the magnitude. Um, again, with Japan and Chile representing the extreme ends of the scale. For gender, the, re the results are a little bit different. Um, the direction of the gradient is a little less clear. In, in Japan and Norway, for instance, uh, women are less likely to report poor health than men, whereas in Chile and Portugal, they are, they are much more likely. Um, and I should say, I, I intended to in include some confidence bands on, on these um, charts, but I had a little trouble with the, with the chart before I, I uploaded the slides. So, so a, a lot of these um, uh, graphs in sort of the middle range are, are not, essentially not significant. Similar for minority status, there's a pretty large range with, for example, in Portugal and Finland, uh, minorities reporting uh, slightly, or less likely to report poor health, um, but this is perhaps reflecting the inclusion of, of relatively new migrants um, in the minority coding. But again, we see a pretty large range both in direction and magnitude. So, the, so then our, our next question is, you know, with these, um, with this variation mapped, is there any um, sort of association with uh, welfare state spending? Um, and so first looking at, at overall self-reported health, um, there's, there, we saw no association with overall welfare state size, the, our, our, our measure of total social expenditures. Um, but we did see a, a negative association with uh, public health spending. Um, when we look at the gradients, we saw something similar with gender and where in which there was no real association with, with the total welfare state size, but um, we did tend to see smaller, uh, smaller gradients in countries with, with larger health spending. 
Uh, for our other var variables, however, um, income, education, and minority status, um, we, we didn't see any um, significant associations. Although I will say that for education and, and income, there was a suggestive direction, although it wasn't necessarily significant, um, but suggestive in the sense that um, countries with, with higher levels of, of uh, health spending had slightly uh, lower education and income gradients. And so just uh, briefly what this looks like. Um, this is the association between social, total social expenditures and, and the overall probability of poor health, self-rated health. Um, and we don't really see an association, but when we look at, at public uh, spending on health, um, we see a kind of nonlinear relationship where there seems to be maybe um, some initial improvements at lower levels of public health spending that kind of uh, taper off at, at higher levels. Uh, looking again at uh, the gradient in terms of gender, um, looking at social, total social expenditures, we don't see a, a strong association in any direction. But again, we see a kind of nonlinear uh, association looking at public health spending, where uh, the countries at lower levels of public health spending tend to have, uh, in those countries, uh, women tend to be more likely to report poor health than men. So I briefly want to say that, uh, so I think these results are suggestive rather than conclusive in any, in any way. Uh, but so I, I think what we can gather is that, um, you know, in, in this sample at least, the general, general welfare state size seems unrelated to health and health inequalities, but there does uh, seem to be a suggestion of a benefit from uh, public health spending. And again, this, this relationship is, is nonlinear, suggesting maybe uh, greater benefits at, at lower levels. There's still, um, as I mentioned, this is, we see this as kind of a, a stepping stone to a, a additional research. Um, and, and there are a lot of challenges, both in measuring the welfare state's influence and measuring um, sort of health measures cross nationally. Um, one challenge is, is a sort of gauging the influence of the welfare state. Um, you know, although we, we sort of asked the question additionally by looking at overall sort of size and generosity, um, there are also questions of, of sort of the effectiveness and coverage of, of welfare state interventions. Um, and then a possible additional work to do um, looking at, at targeted spending and matching that with specific inequalities. Um, and just to give an example, a result I wasn't able to in include in the slides that we've looked at is uh, looking specifically at, at social spending on, on family, uh, family support and family leave policies. Um, and that seems to be a, a little bit more associated with gender disparities than um, more general measures of, of welfare state involvement. Um, additionally, we, we hope to, to replicate this using other um, health measures. Um, you know, al although self-assessed health is, has sort of been shown to be kind of predictive of mortality and, and has been sort of deemed suitable for comparison by the WHO, um, some of it raised concerns about, you know, using um, self-assessed health in cross-national comparison um, and, and sort of the possibility of different cultural interpretations of the questions and, and, and answers. Um, so, so we'd like to get, um, you know, sort of replicate this with um, different health measures. But the, the advantage of self-assessed health is, is it tends to come in surveys that, that have um, some, some independent variables that are, are easier to use, uh, such as like minority status. Um, particularly in, in Europe, um, it's, it's hard to find uh, health data that also collects um, data on ethnicity or minority status. Um, and I would just say, uh, broadly, we, uh, we see this, you know, as um, cross-national comparative data uh, becomes more um, widely available, we, we see this as, as kind of one um, step in, in a larger consideration of, of, the, of a wide range of, of upstream kind of political, economic, and social factors that shape the broader context of health and health inequalities. Thank you.